Hi, it's Shannon from Lily Creek Photography and Art Studio. Uh, today we're going to do a mountain range painting. I'm going to use a variety of pinks. So I'm going to use a dark pink, a medium pink, and a light pink, as well as some reds and yellow, black, and white for mixing. Um, you can use any colors you'd like. So if you'd like to do it more in blues, if you want to do it in greens, yellows, oranges, anything you want, you absolutely can. Um, we're also going to use uh, three brushes. So I use a large flat, a medium round, and a small round for detail. You're going to want a cup of water for mixing and some paper towels to wipe your brushes off. And we're going to get started. So I'm going to grab my medium round brush and I'm going to dip it in the water and dab it on my paper towel. And we're going to create uh, like a mountain range painting. So the ground is going to be about three quarters of the way down. Then we're going to have mountains and then some smaller hills and we're going to have a sun with rays. And we're going to do this all with pinks. It's going to be really cool. Um, so I'm going to start by just using my medium pink just to do some lines so that I know where I'm going to put the rest of my painting. So I'm going to start about three quarters of the way down and I'm going to do a line across. Then I'm going to do, I'm going to do like a bit of a stream coming down. So I'm going to come like this and down and then I'm going to bring it like that. And you do want it to get a little wider at the bottom. So if you're not happy with that, you can always go back. And the great thing about acrylics is that you can correct anything. So um, now we're going to go in and make our mountains. So I'm going to make some peaked mountains. We're going to do a high one. And you can add as many peaks as you want. You don't have to do just three. I'm going to do a, a medium sized one. Oops. And I'm going to come down a little bit and do a lower one here. Like that. Then I'm going to add some hills uh, in our our mid ground here. So I'm going to do a hill here and a smaller one off of there. And now I'm going to add in my sun. So I'm going to add it in behind my mountains. And then we're going to add some sun rays. So normally when I paint my, <coughs> excuse me, when I paint my paintings, I normally paint my background first and then build everything from there. But this time we're actually blocking out our areas. So I'm going to do my rays of sun. So you're just gonna go like this. You can use, uh, again, you use any color you want. I'm doing it in a, a medium or a light pink. That way it's not going to interfere with my paint later, hopefully. <laughs> and these are going to be our sun rays or bands of rays that are coming off of our sun and we're going to do that all in shades of pinks. So I'm going to go in, first of all, I'm going to paint this section here. I'm going to do that in my lighter pink. So I have my light pink, actually I have my small brush right now, but I'm going to switch it to my big brush. And I'm just going to fill in this whole area in this lighter pink. Again, I'm going to switch to my big one so it doesn't take me forever to fill that in. And it, the reason I chose pink for this painting was just to do something a little bit out of the ordinary. Instead of just doing green grass, blue sky, um, gray mountains, just to give it a little bit of life, a little bit something extraordinary. <laughs> and while you're painting, you could paint the edges of your canvas as well so that when you're done, it'll be ready to hang on your wall. And you could paint it, <coughs> excuse me, you could paint it as a color block. Um, you can paint it with the colors that you're doing at the moment, or you can go in later and paint it all black or paint it all pink, one shade of pink, it's up to you. So now we painted our grass or our foreground. You can rinse your brush 
And now you have to choose what color or what shade of pink you want to use for your water. So I used the light pink here. Now I'm going to go to my medium pink. So it's just a touch darker. And I'm going to do that for my little river or my stream. And if you do the pinks, if you have a little girl, I'm sure she would love it in her room. Or if you have a little girl and she might want to do the painting herself. So I'm going to have to use my smaller brush up at the top here where it's a little finer. Just trying to get in here with my big brush and fill it up. So I have my medium brush now. I'm going to grab those paint so it does get smaller at the background because it's farther away there we go so now i'm going to rinse my brush and we're going to fill this area so you'll definitely want to use your large brush for that so it'll take a long time to fill it in with your medium and i'm going to use my darker pink this time so it's more of like a, a fuchsia deep fuchsia or magenta so I'm going to fill that area in. And if you wanted, you can follow the same direction with your brush. So you could go down or you could go across. It's completely up to you, depending on how much movement you want your painting to have. And again, don't be scared to use other colors. If you'd like to use greens, you can. You can always um, soften your colors as well. So if you only have red at home, you can mix red with white and that will make pink. And then you'll have the full range of whatever shades of pink you wanna use. So you could have, um, you could have a dark red if you add a touch of black. You could have a very light pink if you add a lot of white. You could have a, uh, a medium pink if you add, um, just a little bit of white. So it's completely up to you what shades you use. So I'm just using my medium brush to get the smaller areas. And you may need to do two coats in certain areas. This dark pink here is a little bit more um, transparent than my other one. So I might want to go over that when I'm done. I'll let it dry a bit. And one little area down here. There we go. So I'm going to let that dry and I'll probably go in with another coat, but that's looking pretty cool right now. It looks like when you're looking across a field and it's lighter, closer to you, and then as it gets farther away, the grass is greener or darker. So now you're going to rinse your brush and we're going to work on these hills here. So I would probably make these a little darker than what I would make the mountains, but that's completely up to you again. So I'm going to go in, I'm going to take some of my red and I have a deep red on my palette. I'm going to grab that and I'm going to take it to the side a little bit and I'm going to add a little bit of white because I don't think I want it to be red red. I think I still want it to be in the pink family. I just want it to be a little darker, a little bit of a different hue. There we go. I think that looks pretty good. So make sure you mix enough to fill the whole area that you want to fill, like that you want to paint. Because if you don't make enough, then it's going to be hard for you to color match that again. And then you're just going to fill that in. I'm just using my medium brush because it's not a huge space, but you could use your big one if you wanted to. And you can go right over top of your outline that you did earlier for your placement of your mountain. 
or your hill. I guess this one's more of a hill. And anytime you add white to your colors, you'll find that they are more opaque, so they cover more. They're not transparent, which is nice. So you generally don't need to do a second coat on them. So you can use your fine brush too, your small detail brush too, to do any of the straight line work. All right, so then rinse your brush again. Now we got to do this other guy. So I'm going to make him even darker than this one because he's set back. We want to make it look like there's a little bit of depth. So I'm going to grab my red again. I'm going to put it in the same area. I'm just going to add the slightest touch of white. So it's almost still red. very light. If you want it to be darker, you can always grab your red and add a little bit of black and then it will be a dark red, which I may, ha I may actually do, but I'm going to test this one out and see if it's darker. Mm, it's a little darker, but not very much. So I might add a touch of black. So just the tip of your brush, because a little bit of black goes an incredibly long way. If you take too much, it just turns it black. Add a little bit more red here. And you'll notice that I'm using a, a plate with my paint on it instead of a palette. I, that's typically what I paint with. It's easy, I have them at home. Um, you can use anything you want. You can use a plate, you could use a styrofoam container, you could use really anything you want. Anything you have available, if you do have a palette, then that's great too. I'm going to have to use my small brush to get in the fine details there, the tiny little areas that my medium brush isn't going to fit. My, mount, my little hill keeps getting a little higher. There we go. There we go. Now we have a little bit of depth, which is really nice. And I will come back and do another layer on there. Oh, and I may have to touch up my light pink as well because I think my, my hand hit it. So now we're ready to go into our mountains. So I'm going to do them nice and light. I want them to stand out and be nice and bright. Um, I'm going to use my light pink and I am going to add some white to it as well. So it's very light. So I'm going to use another palette as well because my, my current one is getting a little full. So I'm just taking some of my pink. And again, you want to make sure you have enough to paint your whole, all your mountains. And I'm going to grab some white. And then I'm going to mix them together here. And you can, if you have a palette knife at home, you can definitely use that to mix your paints. It works a lot better and then you don't get paint stuck up in the bristles of your brush. So then you don't risk having different colors come into your painting. So I'm going to start over here. And you can make it even lighter still if you want, if it's not light enough. And I have done this painting a few times using different colors. So one time I used um, all of the colors of the rainbow. So I used uh, red, orange, yellow, green, blue, purple. And I did all the rays, all the different colors of the rainbow and it turned out really neat too. So if you wanted to do it again or this time and you wanted to use all the colors, it looks pretty neat. And then you do like the mountains, uh, 
using the different colors. You could have purple mountains, you could have green, you could have blue. Uh, it looks really neat. It's a pretty cool and quick painting that you can switch any way you want. And you can get different results each time with the different colors that you use. So these are nice warm tones. If you wanted it to look more cool tones, you would use your blues, you could do blues and greens, or just do like different shades of blue would be really pretty too. I hope everyone's having lots of fun at home doing this painting. This is a great one to do with your kids or even to have a uh, like a girls night too. So and if you wanted you could always blend your mountains too. You don't just have to have them a solid color. You could add white to them um, and have it blending between your pinks and your and your whites. So you could always go in like I'm adding some white in here. It could be like a highlight on the side where the sun is. You could do it on the other mountain over here too. And just brush it back and forth. You brush, just keep brushing till you're happy with, happy with it. You could add more or take away there and then it gives us a nice highlight. We got our pink mountains. Cool, coming together really nicely. All right, so now we need to paint our sun. So you could use yellow, you could use uh, white, you could leave it white if you wanted, you could do it light pink, you could do it a dark pink, you could do it red even, that would look pretty dramatic. Um, it's completely up to you what you wanna do. I'm going to actually add some yellow into mine just to create a little bit of, um, just a different color instead of it all being monochromatic, which is like one uh, one color in black and white. Um, I'm going to take my yellow, but I am going to dilute it because it is a bit bright. So I'm going to take it. I'm going to move it onto my other palette because my colors are starting to mix together a bit. Oh, and there's a bit of pink in there too, so it's going to be yellow and pink and white. <laughs> and I'm going to mix some white in there, lighten it up. And then I'm gonna fill in my sun. So I have this nice light shade of yellow. And again, you could have your, your sun any color you want. That's the thing I love about paintings is that even if you're following a painting, everybody is always like so different. I'm gonna go right down into bottom of this crevice where the mountains are with the yellow. You can even do like sun rays coming down through the mountains. Looks pretty cool. All right, and now it's time for us to paint our rays. So you can use all of the colors that you used in the foreground into the background. So your different shades of pinks. You could even do different shades of yellows too if you wanted. Um, I actually, uh, I might do some different yellows, but I'm gonna start with my pinks. I'm gonna bring my, I'm gonna start with this guy here. I'm gonna do my light pink. And go right over your outline. I 
And then move, just move to each one and fill it in whatever color you'd like. You can have them all yellows. You could have them uh, yellows and oranges. You could have them any color you want. I'm going to rinse my brush and I'm going to go on to my darker pink. Grab my darker, darker pink. There we go. Grab my medium pink. Grab my darkest one. Actually, I think I'm going to leave a space here. I'm going to do yellow, different shades of yellow here and here. So I'm going to start with my dark pink over here, just so that we re so that we bring that yellow back in as well. So it's not just in one spot. You can do it however you want. You can even leave some white if you want, whatever you think. So I'm going to grab some more white and I'm going to mix it in with the yellow that I had made earlier for the sun. And I'm going to use a lightened yellow. I still have a little bit of pink on my brush, as you can see. I didn't rinse it very well. That's okay. And I'm going to put this one in here. So again, you can do anything you want. You could just have it all shades of yellow. You could have it shades of pink. I'm just gonna grab my little brush and do some cleanup here in the small areas. I like that yellow. I think I might throw that yellow in up here as well. So we've gone ahead and filled in all of our sun rays. I'm going to go now and I want to blend some of them. So this one here blended quite nicely and I decided that I don't like some of the sharpness of them because I've been using yellow and pink. If I was using all this the pinks, it wouldn't, it wouldn't stand out so much, but I decided I'm going to go in and soften some of these. So you want to find um, your colors again that you painted here. So I'm using my pink. And then I'm going to go over it with the yellow at the same time. So I have my nice soft yellow. And I'm going to blend them at the same time. And just soften up those lines a little bit so that they blend together. Now, pinks and yellows don't typically blend super easy. But if you brush back and forth, you get a bit of a softer line. Oops. What, make sure you wash your brush well. There we go. Just to soften it a little bit. And you can also do another coat in areas that need a little bit more color. 
So now I'm going to go up to my darker one and I'm going to brush it. Touch. So remember going back and forth, it helps you blend the colors together. So I'm grabbing my light pink and my dark pink. And just brushing them at the same time. And it softens it up a little bit. Now, if you like the, the dramatic lines, then definitely you don't have to blend. If you do want to soften it a little bit, you certainly can. I'm going to add, grab some more of my yellow. I have a nice soft yellow there. And I'm going to brush it back and forth over my pink just to soften it a touch. There. And same thing at the top. I'm going to bring my yellow and my darker pink. And I'm just going to continue my way all the way around the sun, blending the colors together a little bit just to soften. And uh, you can continue on your own with whatever colors you're using. Hi everyone, we're back. I went back and added um, a second layer of paint to most of the areas. Uh, they were a little light, so I brushed on a second layer to the foreground. I went into our midground as well and darkened up uh, one of the little hills. And I went in and softened up my sun rays as well. So I blended those a little bit. Um, and then I added a little bit of white into my sun just to bring in the white from the mountains and just kind of to relate everything together. And I think it looks wonderful. I'm really happy with how it turned out. And uh, I can't wait to see some of yours as well. I can't wait to, uh, to see what you guys did with your colors, if you used the pinks and the yellows, or if you went with something totally different. Um, yeah, I, I, uh, I think they would all be really amazing. And uh, yeah, I hope you guys had fun and I will see you again next time. Thank you so much. Bye from Lily Creek Photography and Art Studio.